Hello everyone, my name is Josh and this is Estate Sale Treasure Finds. Today I'll be talking about vintage locks, banned chemicals, and industrial locks. So one of my recent finds was this box of locks, which I got for $10 for the whole box. Now a lot of times at sales you'll see sort of vintage looking locks uh, for sale for 2 or $3 a piece and even skeleton keys. And What I found out from looking through this box is that these locks really aren't worth that much. These are worth, you know, maybe five or ten dollars a piece. The locks that people are actually paying good money for are the ones that they're actually going to be using, like these um, these Sargent and Greenleaf combination locks. These are actually highly rated. Uh, locks are actually rated based on how long it takes to break into them, and these are rated as being very secure. So people are actually going to be buying them to use them. I think these are worth anywhere from twenty to thirty dollars a piece, and they do. I do have the combinations to them, which is also uh, key to selling a, a lock. You know, it's important that you have the key or the combination lock to actually sell sell the lock successfully. Now, one of the coolest locks that I found in this box is actually a spare tire lock made for Packard cars. As you can see, it's manufactured by Oaks out of Indianapolis. And I believe this would actually sit in the hub of the tire and mount into the back of the car. Now, th this is actually pretty valuable because this is for 1930s, 1940s Packard cars. And the thing about that is it's actually a specific accessory that it really goes with the car. So any, any Packard car owner is actually going to be buying this to complete this car. And um, so th these locks are worth anywhere from 100 to 150 So getting the whole box for $10 and being able to get this lock was a really great deal. So recently I've been coming across a lot of banned or regulated chemicals. This is an old can of Dutch Boy white lead paint. This actually weighs a pound, believe it or not. Now this has value primarily as an advertising piece, and I think this can sell for anywhere from $20 to $25. Something else I found was this old can of Freon solvent. Uh, Freon is DuPont's trademarked name for a, a chlorofluorocarbon, or a CFC. CFCs, as you may know, are responsible for degrading the ozone layer, and they were primarily used as a refrigerant. Uh, they have since been regulated and other refrigerants are being used. It's kind of interesting that they're advertising it as an electronics cleaner. Uh, I don't know if it actually works really well for that or not, but I've, I've seen some discussion boards where people talk about it and say that it does. I got 10 cans of this for $30, and I think I can sell them for anywhere from $40 to $50 a piece. Uh, old big drums of this stuff sells for $400. So. Uh, another case of uh, a chemical which is not widely available but is still in demand for certain people. I, I don't know what they're using it for, but you know, four hundred dollars I might be able to make off of these off of these old solvent cans. This is another really interesting solvent can, primarily as an advertising piece. It says "Static Stop." Uh, I don't really know what chemical it contains, but Someone might be interested in this, maybe for 30 bucks. Uh, and the, the final banned chemical uh, that I found was inside this timer switch for a furnace. Now, it's kind of hard to see. Maybe you can see it moving around there. But that is an old mercury-based switch. And the idea of this switch is that the mercury would actually tilt and make electrical contact with electrodes and actually turn the device on, switch the device on. So I thought that was pretty neat to find an old device that has that much visible mercury in it and it's, it's pretty fun to just watch it move around. So the last grouping of items I'm going to be talking about are these industrial switches. Now these are sort of automation devices for connecting to uh, a mechanical device or an electrical device and th so this one in particular is for uh, running automatic timing and and so so something you could set the time for how long something's going to run and it'll indicate with these lights I presume whether or not it's on or off. Uh, this one in particular I think I'd get anywhere from 30 to 54. Um, this is a neat one here it's a has a forward and reverse function uh, 
I think I can get anywhere from 50 to 100 for that. Hopefully it's working. It's in pretty nice shape. I only paid a couple bucks for that. So, you know, that's a pretty good deal. So, you know, anything that looks very industrial and looks like, you know, the, the thing about these is that someone is going to be using them. So if it's in nice shape and it looks industrial, that's worth picking up. Uh, this is another one here. It's actually stamped on the back for 1939. Um, it's just a start stop switch. I think it's pretty cool. Uh, I'm hoping that someone will pay maybe 20 or 30 bucks for this. There are newer models of this, so I'm not sure with the age if anyone's going to be interested in it or actually appreciate the look. Uh, one other thing I found was this this airflow switch. Uh, it actually has a little piece of metal that actually registers the airflow as it passes by and it clicks and then it sends that out on the other side uh, electrically and, and registers that signal. So I think that's a pretty cool little little uh, switch and I, I think I can get probably 40 or 50 bucks for that. One really neat neat thing I found was this old uh, it's a Perjo. Pergo ejector. Now I think this is actually from for old furnace equipment and it would actually sort of vacuum out or eject uh, gases out of the furnace that were not wanted. So uh, maybe carbon dioxide, you know, a way, as a way to remove carbon dioxide from your from your home or out of the furnace. Uh, this is seems to be a fairly old piece. Um, I think it might be worth anywhere from, you know, fifty to seventy dollars for the right person. I, I haven't really seen anything like it. Uh, so yeah, I, I, I'm hoping that this one does well at auction. Thanks for watching this episode of Estate Sale Treasure Finds. Please subscribe. Feel free to ask any questions and be on the lookout for the next video.